Right, number two. Do you tell yourself you have no confidence? Well, apparently, did a survey of that when we was on TV once, and it works out it is the number one problem on the planet, that nobody actually has got any confidence. Because people believe that confidence is this, wow, we, you know, look at me, I'm surfing the life, and everything is great, and I can talk to anyone, and I'm earning me money, and ha <laughs> ha. All of these things. But confidence, when we look at the word confidence, um, have a look at that again. I don't know if the American uh, family out there sort of say confidence. I don't know if confidence is, we say confidence. Do you say confidence? I, I don't know. But let's just say you, you do, because I think you do. I don't know. Confidence, confiding, confidence. It kind of, when you look at how it's spelled, it's very similar, isn't it? Because there is the word confide in there. Confidence comes in the way that you confide within yourself. Talk to yourself. Communicate with yourself. Having, having a, an understanding and an intelligence of the way that you treat yourself. Because here's the trick. When you tell yourself you have no confidence, guess what? You have no confidence. Now, you don't have to go around keep telling yourself, I'm a very confident being, I'm a very confident being, I'm a very confident being. The art behind it all is, is stop telling yourself you have no confidence. That immediately gives you confidence because it balances it out. You know when people turn around and say, oh, you know, you're negative, you've got to be positive. You know, use your positive affirmations and it'll stop the negative. No, it won't. Stop the negative affirmations that you keep telling yourself and you neutralize everything. You don't have to give a positive affirmation because you're trying to put a positive with a negative and that's kind of not working. The only way to make a battery run is that you need the negative and you need the positive and they neutralize each other to give the energy of the battery. Makes sense? Yes, it makes sense. So to to heal something is to stop telling yourself something. If you think you, that you're weak and I'm no good and I'm useless and I never amount to anything, my life is shit and, well, I'll never find love and who will want me and I'll never find a relationship. God, the questions are endless. Stop that and you'll realise that everything stops. Your whole workings in your mind, just literally just, it, it stops. Because that's all you've been telling yourself. Stop that. You're banned. From now on in, you're banned. Do you feel like there is something missing in your life? A yacht. Massive house. Great looking woman. Kids. Money. No. I'm missing in life. I'm missing me. I'm missing something within me in my life. I'm missing something. And you all got that feeling? And it's a feeling that sits within us. And it's what puts you on the search. You're, this feeling gives you this searching feeling that you're trying to understand. It's like, I know I've forgotten something. I'm not quite sure what it is. It's like when you mislaid your phone or you've mislaid your keys, mislaid the kids. Joke. Um, you know, this, have I forgotten to do something? Did I forget to lock the back door? Did I leave the windows open? Did I lock the car? It's the same feeling, but you've got all these other material words that you're sort of putting on top of that to find out if that is the feeling that you're actually missing. For me, when I knew that there was something missing in life, I think it was my own intelligence, I think it was the gift of healing, I think it was the power of my own voice, I think it was the power of my mind, it was me expressing myself properly, it was me having a responsibility of me, and I think all of these things that were actually missing, because the outside world had kept me so busy, that I knew there was something missing, and that meant that I didn't give myself any time, really, because I was just too busy on the outside world. And when that outside world stops, by the way, 
as it's done for many of you, that's the moment when you really realise how in pain you are. And that's why you go through such a lot of pain and then you sort of look at the awakening and you think, shit, this is a lot of pain. Why is this awakening so painful? It's not that the awakening is so painful. It's, it's letting you know you're in a lot of pain. Because it, at that moment in time where everything shuts down, you're in incredible amount of pain. And it kind of hits you so hard. And that's why you can't get out of bed in the morning. So there's many of you out there that can't get out of bed in the morning. Because the pain, whoa, I never realized how much pain and anger and stuck energy completely shuts you down. And that's when you can go to the doctors and they say, there's nothing wrong with you. We can give you some tablets if you like, but there's nothing wrong with you, but we'll give you this anyway. What are you giving me tablets for then if there's bloody nothing wrong with me? What are they going to do then? Them, them tablets can't explain my whole life. Them tablets are not going to all of a sudden work out my life from a shitty upbringing right to a shitty life, right to where I'm at at this moment. That's not going to sort that out. It'll never sort that out. But take them if you want to take them. It's up to you. So that's what's missing in your life. You could say love is missing in your life. You could say confidence is missing in your life. You could say awareness is missing in your life. You could actually say God is missing from your life. You could say energy is missing from your life. Enthusiasm is missing from your life. So many things that we actually are missing that is connected to the self. Compassion could be missing from your life. Creativity could be missing in your life. And that's why this book has only got the certain amount of words in it. The rest of the words I don't need to talk about. I don't need to use them because they serve me no purpose. So what I decided to do was get rid of the words. Get rid of the words that serve you no purpose. As they say, all there is is love. Well, right, yeah, maybe. There's a lot more than that. All there is is naturalness. Everything, the sparrows, the birds, the ants, the bees, the trees, what are they all being? Naturalness. A giraffe, a rhino, a lion. Natural. It's just being natural. Find your naturalness. That's been me. Right, okay. So, that's what you've got to do. Find out and question yourself and ask yourself nicely, what is missing in your life? Nothing material. Don't even mention anything material. What is missing in your life that you could change? And it can be just one word, simple as that. Do you feel like you are in a void or dark place? I did for many years. And my God, I, I didn't realise there was a black, more blacker than black. I didn't realise that my mind could go so blank and so black. I didn't realize that even trying to think about what I was going to be doing tomorrow that wasn't happening. I couldn't even, my, it was like as if my thoughts just stopped there. There was, there was no future events. My thoughts couldn't move forward. There, oh God, there was no visions. There was no, absolutely nothing. When you're an hairdresser, see, a client comes to you and immediately you're looking at that person and she's got this type of hair and she's got this type of personality and you're, you're talking to her and as you're talking to her, you, you're already building the future. That's why a lot of hairdressers are psychic because you've got to be because you've got to work out that in an hour's time or two to three hours once you've finished this client that the image that you had in your head, you've now got to translate that into your client. And hopefully you've communicated in such a way that you're both understanding what the result is going to be. That's called love, isn't it? I couldn't even think about how this haircut was going to turn out in an, in an hour's time or two hours' time. I didn't even have the thought there. So I had no future thought within everything. That was the strangest time in my life. You know, and when we hear people say, I'm just, I've just gone blank. I just feel blank. That is a real place. And it really is blank. There's nothing in blankness. It is completely void. It is completely dark. There is nothing in it. 
let me know your stories on that, you know. So in this void of dark place, I discovered that there was. It's like space. Many years ago, when our telescopes could only see a certain amount of space, what did we turn around and say? Well, it's just empty space. There's not a lot going on. There's a few planets. But the rest of it is just dark matter, dark energy, and it's just empty space. There's nothing there. As the telescopes have become more powerful, of course, in all honesty, there's hardly any black space. So in that darkness, see, where you don't think there's something, there is. And that's what I say to you, um, you know, darkness is teaching you something because in that darkness, everything gets born. Um, we, we come from space, didn't we? You know, we we're, well, not come from space. We are in space. That's what everyone forgets, really. We are actually space people, space cadets. And um, so in that darkness, let's say about how the planets are birthing new stars. And there's loads of stuff out there that you can actually see that that is what happens. We've been birthed from a star. So we're star beings, technically, scientifically, we are star beings. We was produced in space. So out of that darkness um, came us. So that's the creation. So out of darkness can come creation. And um, so in my darkness, I kind of knew that there was nothing there, that nothing was working, and I felt completely shut down, and I wanted to end my life because my future wasn't existing, there was nothing there, and it felt bad. There ain't a worse word than bad, but whatever the worst word is, bad, it is bad. So there was no chance, but because I spent so long in there, and I couldn't escape it, I started to realize that there was something there. And what was there was me. It was a place that you could call meditation, but it might be quite nightmarish and quite hellish, really. But because there was nothing there, I realized that something within me felt like it was worth nothing, and that I was nothing, and that I had nothing, and that my life didn't amount to nothing. So in that place, you can communicate with the stars, if you like, your own star. And you start to communicate with yourself in a way, and you will moan a lot, you'll cry a lot, you'll have a go at yourself a lot. But you realize that all you're doing is you will be attacking yourself. That's good for a while. But beamism teaches you to let off a bit here. Why on earth do you keep attacking yourself? And the reason behind that is, is because you think if you attack yourself enough, you're going to get up off your backside and do something about it. But you're actually digging yourself a grave. And that's why people feel like that they've gone deeper and deeper and deeper into themselves. And they've gone so deep, far in within themselves that they can't see a way out. So you've actually dug yourself a grave. I've been there myself. So I'm handing you the shovel to start actually digging yourself out. And do you know the interesting thing? I had a vision and it was like a metaphor. And um, it was as almost as if spirit said to me, if I chucked you down a rope, what would you do with it? I had two choices, right? I'll retire it in one knot, pull it round my neck, and end my life. And I say that really, that's not a joke. That was actually true for me. That's what I felt like. And I know a lot of yous do. Bear with me. Um, or I could tie that rope into a certain amount of knots and make a ladder and start to climb out one knot at a time. And that's what it felt like, that if somebody threw that lifeline rope down, you have two choices, one knot or a series of many knots, and start to climb your way back up. And that's what it felt like for me, that I had to climb up bit by bit. And sometimes I fell. I fell down to the next knot. 
And I looked at it again and I thought, oh, you just want to give up again. And then in that darkness again, because it feels like you're still in that darkness. And if you do fall back down again, it means that you're not quite ready and you haven't quite got the strength to get up to the next knot. In a spiritual term, we can call that the chakras, can't we? But you see the difference in metaphors. Everything can seem like a ladder, or it can seem like a chakra, it can seem like an ascension, it can seem like an upward journey traveling into the light, because we've all been taught that we're gonna travel into the light. And so therefore, when you keep slipping back, right, and you think, why on earth do I keep falling back? I'm trying to get out of this hole and I'm, I'm falling back down. Now, the interesting thing about that is, is that, and here's the truth of it, so I'll give you the top answer for this is, you ain't got to really climb out of anywhere, and you haven't really got to go and search for the light, and, and the light isn't really going to come to you, even though we pray for it a lot, because again, that's like love, isn't it? You want it to come to you. You're not going to do the work. You want it to come to you. But what I've realized was, is as I started to understand my darkness and the darkness that was obviously surrounding me because it was a great teacher, you start to reveal a bit of light from yourself. Imagine this. In the moment that you're born, you've come out of darkness, haven't you? Because you've come out of the womb and then you're kind of in the light as they would say. Technically, that's really what it is. You're onto the planet. You're into the light of. But this planet is quite dark, so you start to lose your light. And every time you get told off, or every time someone's had a go at you, or every time you feel like you're a failure, it feels like that you put an overcoat on, right? You start to feel heavy, don't you? As the years go on, you put overcoat, overcoat, another overcoat, another overcoat, another overcoat, all of these things that are affecting you. Because what these overcoats are doing is that they're actually um, pushing you back into your darkness. They're, they're shutting down your love. They're shutting down your light. They're stopping you from expressing yourself. And in the end, you've got so many overcoats on that you feel so heavy. It feels like you're walking around with lead boots on feels like that you can't swim, you can't, you can't get out of bed, you, you can't, you've got no energy, you can't function because everything feels so heavy. And that's what that heaviness is. Healing. You know, you can try and climb up that ladder with that bloody heavy coat on, and it does, it feels like you've got 20 people sitting on your back trying to climb out with you. And that's what makes you fall because you can't hold on to your own weight because you're carrying so much shit up this ladder that you fall back down into the hole again. Hopefully this is making sense. And so therefore, you look at that and you know that you've got to get up there and you know that's the way out. Right, this is all too heavy. What have I got to do? Right, unload some shit. Unload and take off an overcoat. Making sense? Taking off the overcoats, the problems, the people, the thoughts, the depression, the unlovingness, the illness, depression, anxiety. You've got to strip that stuff off before you can start to climb back up the rope. That's healing. So that's why you're in the dark night. And that's why you're in the dark space. Because the darkness is teaching you to take these coats off. If you're going to understand, one, yourself. Healing the self. And the reason why you've got to do this is because once you know how to do it, that's where you will discover your own truth in it all. Your own truth. No good listening to someone else. Really, you know, I'm giving you my story where what you take from it is down to you. But the, the be me side of it is, is that I'm saying to you, be you, be me, be you. Not be me. Don't be me. 
I'm just expressing myself, being me, so that you can have a look and see where you're at with it and find your own be me spirit. And to me, I think it's one of the greatest things ever because I'm not telling you it's way out there or it's up there or you've got to read this, that and the other. You, you've got your own book, you've got your own soul, you've got your own spirit, you've got your own connection to God, you've got your own connection to self. And this instrument that you carry is an incredible work of art. It's a walking, talking, creative piece of art and it's priceless. And what do we do with it? We treat it like shit, really. You know, somebody wouldn't give you the Mona Lisa, would you? And you wouldn't go to Walmart and put a frame from Walmart on it, would you? And just hang it up in your loft or in your garage, hoping that somebody will see it. You, you don't. I, I don't understand that the Mona Lisa is worth more than you are. What a crock of shit. Anyway. Releasing the overcoats from yourself. You will reveal light. Why? Because you now feel light. I feel like I can breathe. This is beamism. Beamy is, hmm, hmm, let me just question that. Who is beamy? Who is beamy? Who am I being? Beamy is, oh wow, lots of questions there. No answers though. Be me is, question mark. Be me is, or be me is. Be me isn't, be me ness, be me up. It's a bloody religion in itself, I'm telling you. There are eight and a half billion people on this planet and you're all be me beings before you as anything. Absolutely. You know, my great message between I and the Father are one is basically God said to me, son, be me. All right, Dad, I'll try. <laughs>